Have you ever wondered whether Apocoche would make a great addition to your kitchen? Well, today on WTF, we're going to show you the differences between Apocoche Junior and Apocoche 2 Plus, and how to make everything from a pate to gelato. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. And here on WTF, we like to cover fun ingredients, unique techniques, and show you cool new equipment to get you started on your culinary adventures. So remember, subscribe and ring the bell. You do get notified of our content. We come out with something new every single Tuesday. And this week, we're going to be covering um, one of our favorite pieces of equipment, which is the Paco Jet. And it's kind of a cool time to cover it for two reasons. One, they have new pieces coming out. We have the Paco Jet 2 Performance. We have this funky color Paco Jet Junior. So we wanted to talk about that. But then also more importantly, we wanted to showcase why people should invest in a Paco Jet because it is an investment. Um, but if you're you know, either a really hardcore home cook or you are working in a restaurant, you need to save costs and stuff. This is something that's going to give you a lot of returns. So we wanted to really cover the benefits of why um, the Paco Jet is such a great piece of equipment. Scott, can you maybe start off with, and I know you have lots of demos <laughs> planned, so stick around for the whole thing, but like start off with, you know, you certainly worked in restaurants. You know, you've opened restaurants, worked on the line for years and years. What do you think is, you know, the, um, the major benefits of owning a Paco Jet? So the major benefit of owning a Paco Jet is ultra consistency. Every time you put a beaker into uh, a Paco Jet, you're going to get the exact same result, mm -hmm. the exact same texture, the exact same viscosity every single time, uh, no matter what you're doing. This isn't just an ice cream machine. That's mm -hmm. kind of what people think it is. It's like a fancy ice cream machine. Mm -hmm. It is not. It does everything you want it to. Anything that could be pureed or, or into a soup or into uh, even a pate, you can do it in the Paco Jet, and it'll be the exact same every single time. And if you are doing ice cream, it makes the best ice cream I've ever had in my life. So there's a, a, a great number of reasons why you would need one, uh, but consistency is always going to be key uh, for what you're doing in a restaurant. Yeah, I know off camera, you know, we talk about things like labor shortages, obviously, you know, like with rent and everything, like the ability to not waste anything that yeah. you're making and kind of like having a little robotic sous chef in your kitchen. It's certainly something that's going to help. So hopefully today we're going to show you um, a few different ways in which the Paco Jet can help you in your kitchen so that if you have been thinking about whether you want to invest in one, this is going to help you make that decision. So um, maybe for people who perhaps haven't encountered the Paco Jet or they've only heard of it, you know, like in passing, can you describe some of the things you can do in a Paco Jet and kind of what really makes it special? Sure. So anything can be done in a Paco Jet. Uh, it just depends on what tools you're using with it. So it does come with different types of attachments. It does come with different settings. So the main one, like we said, is ice cream. Uh, it's going to make the most smooth, creamy, consistent ice cream out of anything you want. Like we have dairy-free ice cream here that you would not ever know is not dairy. Mm -hmm. uh, all the way to something like a pate, which is this is uh, actually a great kind of example. You can see that there's butter and uh, sous vide pate in here and then after you whip it you get this really perfect consistency completely smooth it takes out half the prep work because you don't have to worry about straining or or any of that because you just grind it all in and everything is going to be consistent so you're not wasting any of that this has a lot of bacon and onions in it mm -hmm. and you just blend it right in you don't have to worry about straining it and then throwing that stuff away that's mm -hmm. right. waste so this gives you more volume more product more things to sell uh, and even down to items that are green. This is a really great tool for items that are green. So actually, I'm going to show you here really quickly, kind of hop into it. Oh, I'm going to go the other way. So this is a chimichurri that we made. Mm -hmm. So this I put into the freezer. I put all the ingredients for my chimichurri. I tossed them into the freezer. This morning, right before the shoot, I came out and I uh, put it in here on a double cycle. So this is the Paco Jet 2 Plus. This allows you to run as many cycles as you want, up to 10 mm -hmm. uh, per unit. So I could just set it in there. You know, in my recipe, I write, you know, put it in the Paco Jet for two cycles, let it go, and it'll do that. And I come back and I have the exact same chimichurri every single time. Mm -hmm. Now the reason why it's so good is that all the heat is contained up here. The piston that comes down with the blade that is attached, which I can take off right now, 
with the blade that is attached, this contains no heat. Okay. So this adds no extra heat to my chimichurri, which is beautifully green, right? Mm -hmm. So that way I'm not going to turn this into a brown chimichurri just by, you know, using the Paco Jet. Right. It adds no heat, so it's not going to heat up your ice cream. It's not going to heat up any of your greens. It's going to keep it green uh, indefinitely until obviously if you leave it out or whatever. But right. if you use sodium bisulfite, which this uses, then it'll never go green. Right. Mm -hmm. so. Never go brown. Yeah, never go brown. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, and then we should probably talk about the differences between the two, because obviously they're different in color, but they are different in uh, the things that they can do. Mm -hmm. So, this is the Paco Jet 2 Plus. This is kind of like the Mac Daddy of Paco Jets. Uh, this has an extremely quiet, extremely fast motor. So, this will churn, uh, I think, one serving in about 30 seconds. Okay. So, if you're making ice cream, and you're doing high volume, you can have a serving every 30 seconds out of this machine. Okay. That's incredibly fast. That's faster than you can plate the rest of the dish, you exactly. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and you don't have to do it one serving at a time. So you need two, three, four servings. You can dial in up here into how many servings you want. Also with this machine, you can dial in exactly how much aeration you want. Okay. So if you're making a gelato like this, you want no aeration, you put 0%. Say you're making an ice cream and you want that extra kind of you know airy mouthfeel, mm -hmm. you can dial it up to 10%. Okay. Whatever you want, you can do with this machine. With the Paco Jet Junior, you don't really have all those uh, tools at your hand. You have this little uh, button right here, which mm -hmm. will help you with the aeration, with the pressure and everything that's going on inside the uh, the machine there. But you don't have the ability to dial it in, so that's about w one different thing. Uh, this takes a little bit longer, I think about a minute 30 seconds per serving, where this is about 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. This also takes about 4 minutes and 30 seconds for an entire beaker. Uh, so these are called the beakers. So if you want to churn the entire beaker, it's about 4 minutes 30 seconds. This is much faster, I believe it's about uh, 2 minutes or so. Yeah, so I think, you know, at the end of the day, if you're thinking about yeah. getting one, the major difference is how, how many people are you serving yeah. in an evening? If it's like a lot, then you probably want to go with the two. If it's not a lot, you know, the, the Paco Jet Jr. still has the same technology and is able to bring that same level of um, delicious performance, <laughs> I think, to delicious performance, delicious like performance that. to the dish. Yeah. So, you know, that's <laughs> one of the major things when you're thinking about, eh, all right, what's the difference between the color? Um, so, okay, what are we going to show people today that they can make in their Paco Jets? Sure. So I'm going to do the chimichurri right now. So I have this beautiful chimichurri that I made. That I'm going to put right over my skirt steak, which is just a grilled skirt steak, Ooh. right? And while this did go in frozen, you can take it out and refrigerate it after it. It's going to hold its color and texture. You don't have to worry about anything else, separation, whatnot, especially with this recipe. Mm -hmm. So that's a really cool thing. And then we get into something like a pate. Now this pate is really special because generally with the pate, there's some emulsification that has to go on. Someone has to, you know, clarify the butter, pour in the clarified butter after they strain the pate, you know, put it into containers that, and then when you cook it, you have to allow it to souffle. You don't have to worry about any of that. Mm -hmm. This, I take all the ingredients uh, after I saute and sweat off um, the bacon and the onions. I put it into a bag. We do all this on our Instagram, so you can check it out. Okay. Right? And there's recipes for this uh, on our blog, blog.monitorspantry.com, in the links in the description below. Mm -hmm. So I take that, I put it into a, a bag, and I sous vide it. When it comes out, I put it right over the cold butter. So I kind of freeze the butter so it doesn't melt, mm -hmm. put it over there. When it's all at room temperature, I put it on the Paco Jet, and I blend it up, and it whips it into this perfect consistency. Ooh. So this perfect consistency. If it's too cold, it can look grainy. It is not. It's just that the butter isn't fully emulsified. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing you need to know. But if you do it at room temperature, you can take it. You can form it into whatever you want. If you want to put it onto a plate like this, so I can show you right now. Perfect pate. That came right out of here. Put it in. But you can see how easy it started and what beautiful you know finished product you get out of it. And then there's so many other things you can do, so we decided why not try making foams? Okay. Because a lot of people like to make, uh, this makes incredibly stable whipped cream. So why don't we try and make something with our foam magic? So I made a red wine foam here, and I made this about an hour ago. And you can see how beautiful Ooh. it is, right? Mm -hmm. Great uh, bubble structure, and I can put that right over the top of my pate. It's going to hold up really beautifully. 
Yeah, and if you <coughs> if you haven't watched Foam Magic, you're like, what is Foam Magic? <laughs> that episode will be in the link in the description below. So you do need something like Foam Magic to get that foam yep. to to stick around. Yeah, and mm -hmm. this will foam any liquid. This right here is a red wine foam. It's a little bit of sugar, a little bit of water, a little bit of red wine foam magic, and that is it. And you can see how wonderfully it holds up. Yeah. Now we can get into the to the ice creams because that's what people you know. The main idea of Paco Jet is to make the best ice cream ever. Mm -hmm. So we have here is a pistachio gelato. We borrowed this recipe, kind of make it our own from uh, Modernist Cuisine. They make a really beautiful pistachio gelato, mm -hmm. right? If I do it here, you can see just how gorgeous it is. Now one thing that this pistachio gelato uses is polysorbate 80. And that works really well in the Paco Jet because of how fast the Paco Jet works, is that it helps emulsify and it will actually slow down the melting of this gelato. So this gelato has been sitting out for about a half an hour. It looks a little melty, but it's going to hold its shape really well and it's not going to dribble all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So Janie, we're going to do one more thing. Okay. We're going to switch sides. Okay. We're just going to do an on-screen demo of how to use the Paco Jet. Yes. So this is the Paco Jet Junior. And now I'm like a lot shorter. So. Yeah. And now I'm a lot taller. <laughs> right. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it right on. Now there's a magnetic tip on that piston. So when I put it on, you'll feel it pull up the blade. And you just have to turn it to make sure it's locked in. Uh, there was an older version that people had that didn't have that kind of, uh, uh, it's almost like a screw cap on it. And it was a little bit difficult. And this starts sideways. And this here is the exact same recipe as this pistachio gelato. We just made it with regular peanut butter. Because who doesn't want that? So put it up and then turn it. It'll lock itself in. And up here, there's an indicator that'll let you know that it's locked in. So you just dial in how many servings you want. I'm just going to do three. And then I'm going to hit the green button, which is go. And you'll hear it start. Now, there's a brushless loader motor in both these, and it's much quieter than an older version. So when you put it on, but it's still going to make some noise. And as it goes down, that blade is spinning. And as that blade is spinning, it's churning that ice cream. So you don't have to churn it prior to putting it inside of the beaker. Okay. You make the, the ice cream base and you just pour it in and you don't have to worry about it. Every other ice cream recipe, you're going to have to make that, churn it, pull it at the right time, and then put it into the freezer to let it fully freeze. This is going to do all that work for you. So as it's going down, like I said, it's going to blend it up. All right, so this is finished. So you just pop it off and you can hear a little bit of pressure be released. So what it did during that is it pushes the piston down and it spins that blade. When that blade spins, it churns the ice cream. You do not have to churn prior to going into the beaker. Most ice cream recipes will make you churn the ice cream and then you put it into the freezer and allow it to you know, completely freeze after the churning. This, you completely freeze the base ice cream and then you're able to churn it on demand. Yes. So you get this beautiful consistency Ooh. for a peanut butter gelato, almond butter, mm. but really the best is the pistachio, especially because we use the uh, Fabry deli paste, the p pistachio. It is unbelievable. Yeah, and this is completely dairy-free. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, so this recipe mm. uses perfect gelato, a little bit of polysorbate, water, sugar, and then whatever you're adding for it, uh, yeah. either pistachio or peanut butter. It's so good. And as always, you can get all the recipes today in the links in the description below. And we just kind of wanted to do this high-level overview because we can stand here and talk about the Paco Jet for an hour, uh, but that would be a very tedious episode. So if you do have any questions about either of the Paco Jet, leave them in the comments below and we'll just get back to you about you know anything that we don't know. We'll ask the manufacturer. We have a great relationship with them. So we can definitely get you whatever you need um, if you're still kind of thinking about like, oh, but can I do this? Can I do that? So there's a lot of different options that we can go with here. And I kind of just want to wrap up. So, you know, I was thinking about you making this mousse and you got the foam and stuff. Do you have an idea of what if you were to do all of this without the Paco Jet? Like how much time would it have taken you to make this plate without the Paco Jet versus with the Paco Jet? So it takes a lot more equipment and time. Mm -hmm. So I would have had to have an ice cream churn. I would have had, you know, taken up real estate inside my oven for the, the, the pate. So probably about 50% more time and then taking up all that extra equipment usage rather than just a few beakers and a couple of Paco jets. So there's a lot that goes on, you know, that this covers up and, and takes off your mind. 
Yeah, definitely. So the ROI on a Pacoja or return on investment is really, really great. Um, if you're thinking about it, let us know if you have any questions. And from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garrett. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you get recipes, ask a chefs, tips and tricks, and more. And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, we'll be here in the test kitchen helping you create memorable and magical experiences.